Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Weinstein Quarantine. And I did take a break because I was in the middle of trying to get back to Monaco. So this is a very special interview. I'm sitting in my comfort of my own home, which is so beautiful to do. And I have a serious celebrity with me today, so it's even better. I don't even know if I could introduce him because everybody knows him already, but I want some talk time and some PRP, so I'm going to keep going with it. Ravindji, thank you so much for taking out the time and being with me here today. Thank you. Thank you, Shalini. Thanks for the interview. Uh, it's my pleasure to be on your show. I can see that you are in the perfect location. Is that a golf course? It is. It is. It's my it's my home golf course uh, in Kapoorthala, Punjab. This is a golf course where I grew up. And uh, to me, it's, it's the best golf course on this planet. Amazing. This is super amazing. So you all have already figured out we have a dead and good buller. India's top golfer, he's an Arjuna awardee, we know the whole deal. I'm not going to tell you all of that because I want to start my first question with the story because all the sportsmen have the most inspiring stories. So I really want to know how Kapoorthala and golf and how did this happen to you? Can we hear your story from you? So basically my uh, mom and dad, you know, they, they both worked in the railways and uh, I grew up in Kapoorthala. And we had this lovely golf course right next to our house. And my dad started playing golf. He was uh, actually, uh, both, uh, both my parents, they were international athletes. So they always had, uh, you know, some sort of interest in uh, other sports. And, uh, you know, the golf course was just a walking distance from our house. So slowly, slowly, you know, started going with my, with my dad and my mom. Me and my mom, we started at the same time. And then uh, basically, you know, just uh, kind of fell in love with this game. And uh, every day, you know, used to just go out there and just play in the bunker and, you know, just roam around. And uh, then, you know, slowly, slowly kind of trying to figure out how to hit the golf shot, how to get better at it. And I think uh, that, was, that was probably when I was uh, maybe six, seven or eight years old. And uh, I still remember I played my first junior event in Bombay and I finished second. Still have that trophy with me. And that was the inspiration. And after that, uh, you know, one thing led to the next, and I just took this sport seriously. I think the high of it, right? When you win, win something, the high that you get out of winning the sport is something else. It just takes you to, let me do this. But it takes a lot of good and determination to be a professional golf and a lot of patience. A lot of patience, for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, especially golf is a, golf is a sport, you know, which goes... Uh, you know, uh, if you if if you, if you talk about cricket or hockey or uh, badminton or basketball, you know these are the sports which, you know, by the time you come in, the, uh, you come and represent Team India, you are probably 18, 19, or 20, and by the time you are 30, you are already done. But in golf, it's a it's a different uh, scenario. You know, by the time we are 30, you know, we try to hit our peak, and you know we go all the way till uh, till 45. So. I'm 32, and this is my 14th year on tour as a professional. So, you know, uh, there's still a lot of golf left in me. So the thing is, the the dedication and the and the focus level is much more higher than the other game. And I think then, uh, after a certain age, after a certain time, it depends on your personal priorities. You know, whether you want to just go out there and play your own game, or you know, whether you have got to spend time with your family. Of course, you got to do that after a certain age and certain time. So there are a lot of uh, you know things which you got to balance in your in your career. I'm sure you're doing the balance. But golf is a sport that you said you can play at any age, so you can go on forever. You know, I know my husband probably started very late. He probably started at 30. I know my father-in-law probably started at 50 something. You know, so it's a sport which you can start at any age. But of course, they can't be who you are because you started <laughs> early and you made it there. So that's super awesome. I have to ask you about the first win because that's always. <laughs> The most difficult one, right? So I want to hear your build up to that and the excitement. Tell us about that. And this world was so. Uh, so basically, you know, I started uh, playing the sub junior tour, and this was back in ninety eight, ninety nine, and I think I was around nine years old, and uh, and it was in Bombay, and I finished second, as I said, you know. So that was an inspiration for me. And in 2000, I won my first sub-junior event that was in DLF. DLF had just opened. That was the first tournament ever happened at DLF Golf and Country Club. And after that, you know, I won close to uh, maybe 19 or 20 junior sub-junior events. And then in 2004, I won the Junior World Masters in, uh, in Thailand. So these were, these were the tournaments, you know, building up to my, to my pro career. And then in 2006, 
um, it was my pleasure to be on the team India when we guys won the silver medal in Doha Asian Games. So <clears throat> that was, of course, one of the you know highlights. And I still, you know, the the feeling of standing on the podium and receiving a medal, that is that is something you know which you which you cherish and which you remember for rest of your rest of your life. And uh, you know, I turned pro in 2006 December, and 2009 was my first international victory, and that was in Indonesia. And uh, I still have that trophy. I'm a, you know, I've, I've won two times in Indonesia, three times, sorry, three times in Indonesia after that. And, uh, you know, somehow I feel that country is so lucky for me, people out there, you know, fans. I've got a lot of support in Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, that part of the world. So, you know, Indonesia, uh, it was Pertamina, President Invitational, and the chief guest was the president of Indonesia. So that trophy, that memory will stay with me for the rest of my life. How amazing is that? How special! I also want to ask you, considering the you know the current circumstances, the kind of anxiety and apprehension that people are going through, and you know they're mentally stressed out. The sport that you play is a mental sport, right? And you have to keep yourself calm no matter what the external circumstances may be. And that's what I always tell everybody that let your external circumstances not affect you. Uh, but it's such a mental sport. So how do you? work on yourself constantly and how do you keep up in your game by doing that? Uh, you know, that's a, that's a very good point which you are mentioning uh, right now. I, I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, right now at the moment, the whole world is going through a very tough phase. I mean, this has happened for the first time in my life, in anybody's life, I think. You know, normally they say in one in 100 years, you know, a pandemic like this happens. And uh, to witness it, to go through this from stage one all the way till the end, I think it's a you need a you need a courage. You got to be mentally very strong. And the first 21 days of the lockdown, I was I was in India. You know, I had just come out uh, of my tournament. I was playing in Malaysia and somehow got into one of the last flights to India. And I was with my family. I was with my mom and dad and my wife. And uh, you know, just to being around with the family and trying to you know support everyone. You know, because. First, first day, second day, you know, heading into the fifth or sixth day, you know, you're still, still okay. But, you know, lockdown, it's not, a, it's not an easy thing. But, you know, as I said, you know, mentally, you got to be very strong and very focused. And, you know, you got to have a willpower that, you know, this is what I'm going to do. I know the whole world is going through a tough phase, but I'm just going to sail through, sail through strongly. And that's all I had in my mind. And till date, you know, it was not easy. The Right after the lockdown, you know, when I came on the golf course for the first time, I was I wasn't I wasn't hitting that ball really well, you know. I was spraying the ball all over the place. But then, you know, I had that courage and I had that mental ability, mental strength to gather everything back and then, you know, trying to get back on the groove. So I think uh, it's it's all in the head. It's all mentally, you know, how you prepare yourself, how you how you how you you know give self affirmations to your to your mind, to your subconscious mind, and these are the things you know which 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 leads you to become a better sports person in your in your life. So if I was to ask you the day in the life of Gabriel Buller, how does your day begin and how does your day end outside of golf? <laughs> uh, well, now, of course, you know, uh, life is back on track pretty much. Um, you know, I wake up early in the morning, start with the yoga and then, uh, you know, the, the only thing missing at the moment is uh, the gym session, you know, which, uh, which I, I, I normally do four to five times a week. Uh, but apart from that, you know, life is uh, life is pretty much on back on track. You know, I practice about five, six, seven hours a day, and then you know try and spend a lot of time with my family. And I think, uh, you know, I, before before the pandemic, you know, I used to travel uh, probably thirty five to forty weeks a year, and my wife used to accompany me only for maybe ten or fifteen weeks a year. So you know, we had to stay separated for a while. And uh, I think it's a it's a it's a blessing in a way that you know we are we are spending a lot of time together. And uh, that's about it, you know, just trying to keep everything simple at the moment, trying to trying to stay healthy, you know, eat good, you know, uh, trying to keep your immunity level high. And uh, that's about it, you know, just stay positive and, uh, you know, just wish wish good for the, wor uh, for the world and hoping for the vaccination uh, to come as soon as possible. And, you know, one, hopefully we all will be back on track. I think so. And I think what you said is something so special because when you're on tour, you're always without your families. And that's why it's so nice yeah. to be able to, 
So this is God's way of doing a sort of a reset. And <laughs> uh, let's get, you get to know your spouse. <laughs> <We're all getting laughs> so I want to ask you also, golf has now become such a popular sport. And I think a lot of the youngsters are taking it up. And, you know, even though it's a really exp super expensive sport and the parents are having to bear the brunt of it. But golf has become yeah. a very popular sport. And then they're also looking at getting golf, golf, uh, you know, assistantships and um, things for college. What is the advice that you would give to the youth today who want to pursue golf as a professional sport? Um, you know, uh, I grew up in India and I have seen uh, the golf world in India change from me. Uh, when I had just started playing golf, you know, there were close to 200 golf courses in India. This was talking like early 2000s. And right now, I think close to So, golf is booming. This is picking up in a, in a, a of course, you know, the moment is releasing a lot of funds for it. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, public golf courses are, are, are underway, they are under construction. So I have I've seen the last 15 odd years, you know, the golf has definitely changed. And so many young people uh, have started, uh, you know, young, young players have started playing golf. Like I remember back in the day when I used to go uh, take lessons from Mr. Jesse Garwal and Chandigarh, we were probably four or five of, uh, you know, kids under the age of 15. And now when I go, uh, there is no space to even, uh, you know, practice. There are so many kids and there are so many parents, you know, and they have that passion, you know, they, they, so many parents, they come and, you know, they, they talk to me and, you know, a lot of kids, they come and they, they try to take uh, some sort of advice from me. And, you know, these kids are, they are, they are full of confidence, you know, they are fully aware of what's happening. Because when I grew up, you know, we, we never, got online. You know, we never, we never had YouTube, we never had any Google channel back in the day. But now, you know, these kids are so up updated when it comes to your technique, when it comes to your diet, when it comes to fitness. So it's really good to see, you know, youth in India are actually heading on the right path. But, uh, you know, one advice which I would like to give to kids and parents is that please don't pressurize your kids because at the end of the day, you know, this is, this is a natural ability. Uh, you know, like in America, you know, it's a home of golf. All these coaches, they say either you have it or you don't. And, you know, the, the thing is, you know, you got to, you got to, you got to make a decision at, at, a, at a certain stage, at a certain age. I know in India, you know, our parents are more into studies because, you know, India is still a developing nation and, you know, we still have to fight with a lot of uh, other social uh, reasons. But uh, other than that, you know, I think uh, I, youth is in a, is in a great track. Uh, good golf courses have uh, come up in India. But this is the only advice to, to parents that, you know, please don't pressurize your kids. Uh, your kids can do much better, uh, you know, even without you pressurizing. Because, uh, you know, in today's day and age, you know, they are they are fully updated. They know what to do. Uh, just trust your kids. Uh, just, uh, you know, just tell them to work hard because there's no substitute for hard work. And that's all, uh, you know, that's what my parents taught me. And uh, I think that was my mantra of success. So I'm, I'm quite actually amazed to hear that you see that either you have it or you don't. Because I thought it was a sport if you were to actually... <laughs> Uh, practice you could get there of course not maybe not professionally but at least it's a sport which you can practice and probably get there and like you said about the Indian parents I'm not going to generalize but a lot of the parents when the kids are growing up they say Sara din khilta rata hai kuch nahi karta hai and if they come back and eat bullet they say oh my god <laughs> so awesome <laughs> <laughs> so it's just about that right so this is a question which my husband actually asked me to ask you because he's in the sport business as well um, so he said to ask you, what will you do post-retirement and how do you see yourself contributing to the growth of sports in, in India? Uh, I will. I have a NGO. I have a foundation under the name of Gaganji Gaganji Buller Foundation, and uh, the thing is, you know, uh, we actually started this foundation with having a image in the mind to promote golf in underprivileged kids. Uh, 
so i actually started this in back in 2013 and then slowly slowly you know when i when i thought that you know there is a lot to do apart from golf so now i am into i have adopted uh, a village in punjab where from uh, where my ancestors uh, are from my grandfather is from that village so you know i have been um, i've been uh, i have donated a water treatment plant to that village and i've been doing a cancer research program every year so we are we are closely working with a roku cancer charitable trust it's based in uk so you know that is that is what i would like to do and uh, and just now just uh, when the corona uh, thing started you know we had uh, shortlisted 30 families and my foundation is going to donate solar panels in their house and they all are underprivileged farmers you know who are in heavy debt and who have been struggling to you know make their daily uh, ends meet so there are 30 families we have already started we have done the work for 10 families and uh, this is this is the thing you know because the electricity bill and you know it's it's so expensive in the in the villages they just cannot afford and you know their kids wanted to study but there is no light in the house so we, uh, i have donated close to 3 megawatt uh, uh, unit every house and we have already finished with 10 homes and 20 are still under under process so i think this is this is something which i would like to do post retirement and uh, of course you know i have got other other ventures i'm i'm based in california at the moment and uh, you know i mean i'm i'm i like to uh, you know indulge myself in a lot of businesses so i've just started a um a business as well so you know try to keep myself busy good so there is there is already a plan in place to do good there is there yes. is <laughs> But I want to tell you that um, I know recently you did the Champions for a Cause, which is where this conversation came about. Because I was talking to Charu Narayan about that, and she said, "Oh, why don't you talk to him? He's so such an interesting person to talk to." I said, "Do something, help me! I want him on my show." And there you are. So I know that you keep doing good, and even in these current times, you've been doing things to give back, which is super, super awesome. And I want to thank her, and I want to thank you also for being here. But before we, so I'm going to go to the best part of my show, which everybody loves. Which is rapid fire. Get to know Gadanji Bullar. I'm ready. <laughs> Are you ready for it? So there might be some yeah. some um, cheeky ones, and I want you to totally respond back with your cheeky answers. <laughs> okay. So let's start with blue. What's your favorite color T-shirt for golf? Blue. Uh, because I'm wearing it today, you know, uh, I knew that this question will definitely pop up. So blue is my favorite color, and uh, thrice I won a tournament wearing blue T-shirt on Sunday. Wow! How nice is that? And I want to tell you yeah. that today particularly, blue is the color of the day. It's supposed to be a very lucky color. Okay. But you also, wear <laughs> blue outfit. Okay. So great, you're the same thing. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite movie? Uh, the Pursuit of Happiness. I must have watched this movie probably hundred times, and I can still watch it. I can go back now and I can watch it again. I don't think you're in pursuit of happiness now, though. You found your happiness, right? <laughs> what do you watch on TV outside of golf? I'm sure you watch a lot of golf, but outside of golf, what do you watch on TV? You know, honestly, I don't watch much golf on television. I, I mean, I, I hardly watch until unless, unless there is a major uh, championship going on, or some sort of a WGC going on. Uh, but I, you know, it might be a surprise to you, but I watch Business Channel most of the time. you know uh, i i just watch investing channels and you know just trying to gather a lot of knowledge of investing world that's nice okay that's that's uh, i hope na uh, since golf is your profession what is your recreation uh you know i like reading i i i read a lot and uh, you know i try to read uh, close to 100 150 pages every day before i go to bed and uh, you know try and read of other fields you know other uh totally other culture and you know other languages and other countries and other people so that is that is one thing which i really enjoy so you have the ceo habits huh the reading habits is <laughs> as you say <laughs> okay favorite vacation destination or destination um i've only been there once and i would love to go there every year uh, for rest of my life and that's fiji yeah you won a tournament there as well i won a tournament there as well yes fiji international yeah yes Okay, so this is something I'm going to ask you. I don't know if you're going to be honest or not. The sports stars are always hit on by girls. I mean, they they are. You know that they are. Do you indulge it or do you ignore it? Well, uh, at times indulge, at times ignore. Okay, the wife is watching, so you can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's your favorite car? 
you know, last year I won a BMW M8 in a hole in one in Germany. And uh, uh, the, the good part was that just before the tournament started, uh, you know, that, that tournament was sponsored by BMW in Germany. And I just took that car out for a spin. And never in my dreams I thought that I wasn't going to win that car. And uh, it was just, you know, on, on, on Friday, the second day uh, of the tournament, I won that car. And uh, that was my dream car. And that is my favorite car. So I think uh, it's great that you have the dream car, but now you should go for my dream, which is the Aston Martin. I think that's your car. I just need <laughs> an Aston Martin, so you should get an Aston Martin as well. Um, Done deal. Which is the dog set you use? Uh, Titleist. I have been with this brand from last, uh, I think, uh, 16 years. And uh, this is a brand, you know, while growing up, which was the number one brand. And I always wanted to... You know, uh, uh, of course, first buy this brand, you know, a set of set of this brand. And then uh, in the last 16 years, I've been their brand ambassador. So it's a, it's, it's a great feeling. You know, I was always a fan of Titleist and now I'm their brand ambassador. How nice is that? That's all your dreams have come true. Yeah? <laughs> That's amazing. Hindi music or English music and what's your favorite song? None of that. Punjabi music. Daljeet is my favorite singer. Oh, I love him. <laughs> like, <laughs> a friend of mine there, Shalini, is asking, what's your handicap? <laughs> uh, well, uh, the thing is, uh, in prose, we don't have handicap. So our handicap is scratch. Yeah, I know that it's scratch. But she, she clearly has never played golf in her life. But she has to address all the questions here. <laughs> your most embarrassing moment. Uh, you know, this was in Korea uh, back in 2012. Uh, I was about to hit a shot and I slipped and uh, my club fell in the water and this was live on television. So that was that was quite funny and embarrassing at the same time. <laughs> How fun is that? Okay, do you have any superstitions when you're on the course? So many, too many of them, too many to discuss on this show. Uh, really? I think, uh, you know, as a, as a sports person, we all have these small little things that, you know, to tie, uh, you know, uh, to use a red T on a par four or probably, you know, to use uh, this color of cap or this color of shoes on a first round or second round. So, as I said, there are too many to discuss on the show. The blue T-shirt is also one. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of them. Yes. Your role model sports person, golfer or otherwise? Uh, you know, I, uh, like when I was growing up, Tiger Woods was, he was one fellow who I watched on television and then uh, I had a privilege to play with him and then, you know, to ask him a few, few, few questions about my swing, about his mentality. And I think, uh, I, well, I first met him in 2009 while I was playing the British Open. And it was just like, you know, one of those moments, uh, my star, my role model, he was right in front of me and I went and met, met him. So, you know, I think as a golfer uh, from the golfing fraternity, it's definitely Tiger Woods. Outside golf, it's uh, definitely Mr. Milka Singh. Uh, you know, he's been a, he's been my role model ever since. Uh, actually, uh, I think I've just mentioned uh, to you, my mom and dad, they were international athletes. So yeah. he was their role model as well. And then, uh, you know, when I met him, uh, you know, he was, he was actually uh, my father's coach. My father was also from 400 meters. So he was my dad's coach. And then, you know, he inspired me to pick up golf and that too professionally. And then his son, G. Milka Singh, who is a senior golfer, who is a, a senior on the, on the tour. So, you know, the whole family has been, has been really inspiring for me. Wow. You know, it's, uh, it's uncanny, but my husband actually works with the World Athletics Federation. So, athletics, wow. when you talk about your parents being athletes, and you talk about G. Milka Singh for us also, you know, it's a fake story. So, uh, amazing. My God, there's always something or the other that goes around. I have to read what she's written because I think I was making fun of her on the show. So she's <laughs> written a comment which says, um, the last time I played golf with my dad and brother, he had to remind me that I was playing um, okay. but not hockey. <laughs> so, my game is bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You just saved your ass by the question. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, how do you go from being a casual weekend golfer to becoming a professional? Uh, you know, uh, that, that switch is the, it's, it's the hardest part and that's the easiest part. So when I'm back home in Kapoorthala or in Chandigarh or in Delhi, you know, I have a set of, uh, uh, we have six or seven of us and we try and play, you know, small money games and we try and play, you know, uh, some fun games on the, on the golf course. So that is what I like to do if I'm not golfing, if I'm not touring on the, 
on the on the tour uh, so i think that is that is that is my passion and you know really like to play with my friends beat them you know that's 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 what i really enjoy apart <laughs> from not competing on the tour <laughs> so i have to tell you my story i actually bought my husband the golf set for one of his birthdays and i told him now every time you win the money is mine so <laughs> i've been doing <laughs> good deal for a really good long deal <laughs> that's a that's a very good investment i would yeah. say <laughs> uh champions for a cause was your give back initiative and i know that you already have an ngo of yours do you have any such other events coming up for your doing uh, you know charity events uh yes i've been in touch with the magic bus uh, you know it's a it's a charitable trust uh, they have been they've been really helping the um, you know underprivileged kids in this uh, tough times and i think i've been told that they are going to feed close to 26000 families for the next 6 months so they are they are they are trying to you know that that was the that was the first uh, uh, fundraiser which they did through us and i was uh, you know really happy and privileged to be a part of it and i think now again we try to you know get involved with these kind of activities and till the time you know pandemic pandemic is not over i will definitely do my part that's nice that's lovely your favorite wins um uh, I think uh, you know all the wins are uh, favorite, but uh, my last win in Fiji that was something really special. Um, you know, my wife was with me that week, and uh, it was just you know the whole thing building up all the way till till Sunday. You know, that was really something special, and the way I made eagle on the seventy first hole, which seventeenth hole of the of the, of the day, that was something special, and that shot I will remember for the rest of my life. Wow! How about the Arjuna Award? That must have been something else. <laughs> that is uh, that is something you know i've got a picture framed uh, in my kapoorthala house uh, house in chandigarh and the house in uh, california and the moment i go in and out you know i see that picture probably 10 times a day and uh, you know that is something which uh, you don't need to remember because you can never forget that and it's in your heart and you know when you're standing over there in front of the president and before and after when there is a you know you have to stand uh, for the respect of our indian national anthem you know that is that is the place you know where you feel that your hard work has been rewarded and uh, you know it's it was just a great moment and uh, receiving a award from the president that feeling you know that that gave me an inspiration that i'm going to go back work even more harder and then you know try and win the rajiv gandhi khel ratna award which is the highest award so that is my dream and that is my that is my passion and i'm going to you know i'm going to work hard towards it How amazing! And you shall, and you will get it. And what an honor! I mean, an Arjuna Award! My God, what an honor! Super awesome. Um, a quote you live by, or your mantra? Uh, you know, uh, never say die. Or you know, there are. I have a lot of affirmations in my in my mind. You know, and these are the things you know which really help you uh, when you are when you are struggling on the golf course, or you know, whenever the things are not going in your way. So I think this is this is definitely one of them. It keeps on ringing in my mind subconsciously, even consciously, and keeps me reminding that you know I'm still in the game and I've still got to go out there and give my hundred percent. Awesome. How would you define ambition? Uh, I think it's it's the hard work. It's the it's the it's the goal. It's the path which you which you have, which you set, and uh, you know just have a single single track mind. You have a dream in right in front of you. and just you know just keep on working hard at it and that's what my coach says uh, you just never say die just keep on going at it single track mind and uh, one day you know hopefully you will definitely reach your destination and you will an animal that describes you and why <laughs> uh i think bull <laughs> <laughs> bull eric <is it? laughs> yeah maybe because of the bull market the bullish you know you got to be bullish every yeah. every time in your in your life Yeah. and uh, it just that you know just uh, the moment the moment i see the bull you know uh, the one which is right outside the stock market or the you know the one which you see in uh, tarot card reading every day you see the morning, you know it just, <laughs> it just it just gives you the hope that you know i am heading this way so maybe you know that is that is one signal which i really like nice nice one what's your idea of fun uh <laughs> you know uh, a good round of golf with my buddies uh, that is definitely my idea of fun followed by you know chit chat and you know making fun of each other's golf swing and you know trying to tell them i'm better than you and you know they they basically try and tell you no you know today i beat you so you know something to do with you know a, a fun round of golf 
clearly your friends have to be as good as you because if you have to still have this conversation they've got to be as good as you i would have thought well, you normally well normally i've i i give them uh, eight shots on the golf course and uh, <laughs> lately i have won all the all all the matches so i'm on a winning streak <laughs> that's a tough one i mean this is a good golf <laughs> how much shots should i give <laughs> Okay, finally, what is your message to the viewers that are watching you today? Please inspire them. Please inspire everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, Shalini. Uh, you know, I really like uh, your initiative, and you know, you try and bring all the positive people. And I, I, I feel I'm one of the positive uh, guests uh, you've you've had in a while. And uh, you know, it's been it's been a great. As I said, you know, the whole world is going through a tough time, and uh, just stay positive. Uh, you know, talking about my golfing. Uh, golfing friends and golfing fraternity you know i see so many people you know somehow they feel that you know mentally they are they are they are they're struggling at the moment but just don't lose hope you know we are we are going through a tough phase and uh, you know tough time doesn't last but tough people do so i just believe in this phrase and uh, just stay positive and you know we will one day definitely achieve our goals how nice is that and thank you so much i'm truly humbled to have you i know i've been trying to watch your interviews on youtube etc but you're talking about the sport mostly and which you should because that's your passion and that's what you do but i wanted it to be something more real in the current circumstances and somebody who's such an inspiration to be here with me today thank you ever so much and i wish you well and you've got a great fan in me now i'm going to be watching <laughs> everything and cheering for you and thank you again to charu for having you on this show with me and thank you to the viewers who came up there and watched and i just feel that we need a lot of patience perseverance persistence and practice for anything in life golf of course but anything that you want to do if you're determined you can do it and like you said never say die thanks again that and we'll see you soon thank you all for watching thank you thank you so much thank you have a good one yeah thank you